going to talk about dilations that do not occur with the origin as its center. And by the end of this video, you are going to easily be able to take this dilation noted below, which is a dilation of the point 8 comma 4 with a scale factor otherwise known as k of 3 and the center at negative 1 comma 5 as opposed to the origin. I'm going to show you how to do that both graphically and algebraically and when we get to the algebra portion I'll show you two different techniques and point out the one that I prefer. The second thing we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to look at a graph something like this where you have overlapping figures and I'm going to show you from the graph how to find the center of dilation and to find the scale factor. In this first example, we're asked to dilate this triangle, ABC, with the center at negative 7, negative 5, as opposed to the origin, and to use a scale factor of 2. So folks, doing this graphically is actually easier, I think, than doing it algebraically. So the first thing you do is take this point by point. And that's true when you're doing any transformation of a polygon, as you know. So let's look at point A and determine where A prime would be, its mirror image. First thing you want to do is look at the distance both horizontally and vertically from the center to the point in question. So you could see the original point, point A, is going to be 1 to the right and 2 up from the center. So we're going to apply the scale factor. Here's our point A. Initially, it's 1 to the right and 2 up. We're going to apply the scale factor, which is 2, and we're going to simply double those. So now we're going to have 2 to the right and 4 up to get A prime. We're always going to go back to the center. We are now going to go 2 to the right and 4 in the upward direction to put ourselves here. Again, always start at the center, two to the right, and four up. So that would be your A prime right there. Okay, now we're gonna look at the B. We're gonna look at the original distance, both horizontally and vertically, that point B is from the center of dilation. So you could see, to go from the center to point B, we're going to go 4 to the right. Here's point B, 4R, and then we're going to go up to 4, 5. Therefore, to find B prime, we are going to go 8 to the right, 4, 8, and we're going to go 10 up, 2, 4, 5. Two, four, five. So that's going to be our point B prime. Same exercise for point C. We're going to find the initial distance both horizontally and vertically from the center and we're going to apply the scale factor. So initially to the right it's two, four, six, two, four, six, seven, eight to the right and two up. So we're going to double those. So we're going to go 16 to the right. All right. So getting back to the y-axis, that would be 7. So we're going to go another 9. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 puts us there. And we're going to double the amount that we go up. And we're going to go 4 up. Two, Four. Okay, puts us right in the middle of 8R, 2, 4, up, right there. So that's going to be our C prime. Now, something I want you to notice. When you draw a line from the center of dilation through the original point and to the image after the dilation. 
that line is going to have a constant slope. It's going to be a line is another way to say it. Same thing with B. If we draw a line from the center through B to B prime, it's going to be a straight line. And finally, the same is true when we dilated point C to C prime. Now, it's very important to note that the slope of that line has nothing to do with the scale factor. Look, it can't. The slope is different uh, depending on which point you're looking at. But when you're doing this, if you're not sure if you're on the right track, just in your mind, double check. Go from the center through the original to the image, and you should maintain a straight line for all three points. One final note, if we were to connect the prime points, you could see that the new triangle is indeed larger, and that is consistent with the fact that the scale factor is greater than 1. Here is the previous problem we just completed graphically where we did a dilation with the scale factor of 2 with this center located here. And this is a cleaned up version with uh, cleaned up version of what we ended up with. And this was our final image. So I went ahead and documented the points, which we really didn't need to do to do it graphically, just using the technique of figuring out the distance from the center of the original point and then applying the scale factor and plotting the image. But I went ahead and documented the coordinates of both the original point and the image for both point A and C. And let's talk about how to confirm these points algebraically. Work on that algebraically. And let's look at point A. Recall the original point A was at negative 6, comma, negative 3. We're doing a dilation with a center at negative 7, comma, negative 5 with a k factor of 2. And we ended up with a final point graphically of negative 5, comma, negative 1. Now I want to show you a formula that is used by many students and teachers alike. And this formula makes total sense. However, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. But let's look at this formula just in case you run into it. Okay, so this formula says that if you have a center, a comma b, and you're working with a point with coordinates x, y, and a scale factor of k, that this formula will provide you with your final point. And look, it makes total sense. First thing they do is they find the distance between the x-coordinate of the point we're working on and the center. Then you multiply that by the scale factor and you add that to the a-coordinate of the center. That's exactly what we did, if you recall, from the graph. We looked at the center, we found the x distance that the original point is from the center, then we applied the scale factor, and we went back to the center and added that distance to get the final point for the x-coordinate of the image. Same thing with the y, but just in the vertical direction. The distance between the center and the y-coordinate multiplied by the scale factor and added to the original y-coordinate of the center. This formula works, but I think this is an easier way to do it. And I call this technique apply unapply. And I go over this apply unapply technique in another video that I did uh, on rotations about points that are not at the origin. But let me review with you how it works. You take the center and you ask yourself, 
how would I get back to the origin? In other words, I'm familiar with doing dilations about the origin. All you do is apply the scale factor to get your final point. So to get us from the center that they're asking us to work with to the origin, we would have to add 7 and then add 5. So we're going to take the point we're working with, which is a negative 6, negative 3. And we're going to apply this to our point. So when we add 7 to negative 6, we're going to get plus 1. And when we add 5 to negative 3, we're going to get plus 2. Now we're going to apply the scale factor. So if we apply the scale factor to this new point that we have, which is the scale factor is 2, we're going to get 2 comma 4. Now we're going to unapply. That's where this comes from. Unapply. I should put that in quotes because that's not really a word. So now rather than adding 7 and adding 5, we're going to subtract 7 and subtract 5. We're going to undo what we did originally. And when we do that, we get 2 minus 7 is negative 5, 4 minus 5 is negative 1, confirming what we got graphically. Let's now use the same technique on point C. Recall, graphically, we took the original point C, 1 comma negative 3, we dilated with a center at negative 7, negative 5, scale factor of 2, and we ended up with 9 comma negative 1. So let's use the same technique. We're working with the point C, which is 1 comma negative 3. We're going to apply this to our point. Where did we get this from? Here's our center. In order to get that back to the origin, which of course is 0 comma 0, we have to add 7 and add 5. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add 7 here, and we're going to add 5. And that's going to bring us to 8, positive 2. Now we're going to apply the scale factor, which was 2. We're going to double everything. We're going to get 16, comma, positive 4. And then, folks, we're going to unapply unapply what we just did. We applied plus 7 plus 5, so we're going to do minus 7 minus 5, and when we do that, we end up with the point 9 comma negative 1, which matches what we got graphically. Let's do one more example of the apply unapply technique. We're going to dilate this point about the center 4 comma negative 5 using a scale factor of 1 half. So our center is 4 comma negative 5. We ask ourselves how do we get to the origin? We have to subtract 5 and add 5. We're going to do that to our point. 12 minus 4 is positive 8. 13 plus 5 is 18. We are now going to apply our scale factor, which is 1 half, and we're going to get 4 comma 9, and now we're going to unapply what we did originally. So we're going to add 4 and subtract 5, and our final point is going to be 8 comma 4. You cannot get much easier than that. I think this is the best way to do it. That formula is available to you and it does make sense, but I love this technique. Let's now move to the second portion of the video where we talk about looking at a graph and determining what the center of dilation and the scale factor are. So when you first look at these, it could be a little bit daunting. So let's do one at a time. To get the scale factor on this first drawing, we got a gift here because they gave us a horizontal line. Either a horizontal or vertical line will work 
because we can use proportions relative to the scale factor. So when you look at scale factors and you have images, what I like to do is set up this fraction that the new over the original is going to equal the scale factor. So the new is going to be the p prime because that's the image. So the new distance, the post image, is going to have a distance of 3 along that horizontal. And the corresponding on the original is going to be 3, 6, 9, 12. So our scale factor we know is going to be 1 fourth. And this makes sense because you have this distance, you have a scale factor applied, and then you have that new distance. And we have a shrinkage, which makes total sense because our scale factor is less than 1. Folks, the word dilation is a little bit of a misnomer because a dilation can indeed involve a shrinkage. It's similar to rise over run in that the quote-unquote rise could involve a fall if you have a line with a negative slope. But folks, the problem with using that technique of comparing a horizontal or vertical line is that we don't always get that. For example, in our next example, you could see there are no horizontal or vertical lines to use that technique. So we need a different way to find the scale factor from a graph. So let's go back here, and before we find the scale factor with a more universal approach than we just used, let's go ahead and find the center of dilation for these triangles. Recall earlier in the video, we talked about connecting the pre-image and the post-image with a line, and we said that that line would go through the center of dilation. So if we do that for all three sets of points, they all have to have the same center of dilation. And if we do that, that will give us the center. So our center, center of dilation is going to be here. Now recall, the slopes of these lines that connect the image and the pre-image or vice versa it has nothing to do with the scale factor so don't be confused look all these slopes are different so there's no way that that could be the scale factor look the yellow one is even a negative slope so don't make that mistake now this is relatively unsatisfactory because especially if you don't have a straight edge we are guessing what that point is so here's another way to do it the other way to do it is to take advantage of what the slope is of that green line and then continue it this way we're going to get the slope of this yellow line and then we're going to continue it that way same thing with the red line and we're going to be able to coalesce at exactly one point which will clearly delineate where the center of dilation is. So let's look at first the slope between Q and Q prime. So here to get from Q to Q prime we see that we go 3 down and 6 over. So 3 down and 6 over. That's the same as going 1 down and 2 over. So let's do that from Q prime. 1 down and 2 over. So if we do that, 1 down, 2 over, we end up there. 1 down, 2 over, we end up there. Okay. So I'm already suspicious that that's going to be our center point. Let's now look at what happens with P p to p prime. So we're going to go 1, 2, I'm sorry, 2, 4, 6, 7 to the right. So we're going to run 7 to the right. And then we're going to rise 
two, four, six. Okay, that's a hard one to reduce. So let's skip that one for now. And let's look at the R values. So we have, to get from R prime to R, we have one, two, three to the right. So we're running three. And we have two, four, six rise. Okay, so here our slope is going to be 2 over 1 in the negative direction. So we're going to rise 2. So, so to get from R to R prime, we rose 2 over 1. Rose 2 over 1. Rose 2 over 1. If we rise 2 and go over 1, it puts us right at that center right there. Same point we got when we connected Q and Q prime. So I'm confident that that is our center right there. Okay, so our center is there. It's a little difficult to see, but here is our original origin. So let's now figure out how to get the scale factor. How would we get the scale factor if we didn't have the luxury of being given a horizontal line? So we're going to use the technique that we used earlier in the video. That's our center. Okay, I really don't need the origin there, but it just uh, kind of orients me. Okay, so let's look at what happened here. Let's look at the distances from the center of Q, which is the original point, versus Q prime. Now we only have to do one dimension, so let's just do the vertical dimension. So the, uh, let's do horizontal on second thought. So originally, the horizontal distance from that center to point Q is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8. So the horizontal distance originally is 8 units. The new horizontal distance, I'll call that H prime, is 1, 2. So, we had a distance of 8 going to a distance of 2 as a result of a scale factor. So, if we multiply 8 times an unknown scale factor to get 2, and we divide both sides by 8, we would get the scale factor equals 2 over 8, or 1 fourth, which is exactly what we got when we used the luxury of having the horizontal lines. So we found our center of origin by establishing the slope between Q and Q prime, establishing the slope between R and R prime, marching according to the slopes respectively, and we landed on that center. Once we got that center, we looked at the horizontal distances of the original versus the final and we figured out our scale factor. Okay, let's now move to these polygons where we have an original polygon that's large and a new polygon that's small. So again, we're expecting a scale factor less than one. As alluded to earlier, we do not have the luxury of a vertical and or horizontal line to determine our scale factor. So we're going to have to use an alternate technique. So let's first find the center of dilation. Recall, one way to do it is to take a straight edge and draw lines through the images and the original in no particular order. But in this example, it so happens that the image is to our left and the original to our right. We just All you need is two points to connect the line. So we're starting to see that our center is going to be somewhere in this direction. And if we do the N, our center is going to be somewhere in this location. Again, non-specific. So we are going to be more detailed and we're going to look at the slopes of each of these lines and determine 
where that center point is. So let's look, we know we're gonna be down here. So what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna be marching according to this slope for the K, and then I'm gonna do the same for the N, and they're gonna collide at one of these corners right here. So let's look at K. We're gonna go three down, one over. Three down, one over. Three down, one over. All right, so I think it's gonna be right there just based on the lines that we drew. So let's do the end. We're gonna go two up, three over. Two up, three over, and boom, they hit right there. Now, we could do the M's just for the heck of it. Let's do the M in blue. So to get from M to M prime, we go two down and two, four, whoops, uh, one down, I'm sorry. One down and two, four, six, seven. One down, two, four, six, seven. Boom, that is our center right there. Okay, we have our center. Um, that's actually below, our origin's here. So our center is gonna be negative one. Here's our center, negative one comma, two, four, six, negative seven. That's our center. Okay, to find the scale factor, we're gonna compare the distances from that center of the original point versus the image. All right, so let's look at K. Remember, the scale factor is gonna equal new over original equals the scale factor. The New Orleans Saints playing against the San Francisco Giants. All right, so our original distance between K and our center in the horizontal direction is two, right there. So H original is two. H final, the distance, horizontal distance between the center and the image point is one. Horizontal distance originally is two, it moves to one. So, if we take a horizontal distance of two, and in the end analysis, the horizontal distance becomes one, what scale factor takes us from a distance of two to one? So we have two times the scale factor results in one. That scale factor has to equal, whoops, I'm off the screen that scale factor has to equal one half, which makes total sense because the original image is larger than the post image. All right, let's use L as an example, and let's double check this. Okay, let's look at the vertical distance between the center and L. So our center, I went ahead and erased it, but it was at negative one comma two, four, six, seven, right there. Okay, so let's look at the vertical distance between point L and our center. That's the original. Two, four, six, eight. The original vertical distance between our center and L is 8. So vertical original is 8. Vertical prime, which is the vertical distance to its image, is 2, 4. So we have a scale factor of 1 half. You multiply the original times the scale factor to get the new, and that correctly gives us 4. 